I'm sorry that I bailed on you guys. I haven't posted near as much as I thought I was going to. I also haven't done any van updates because this thing has been a pain in the, I don't know what I was thinking. I literally thought I'm gonna buy a van. I'm gonna fix it up in like three days. I'll be on the road. That is not the case, dude. This thing has been, it has been the most difficult thing I've ever done. I also haven't thought of a van name yet. I thought of Van Diesel, but it takes gas. So Van Unleaded doesn't sound as cool. So if you guys can kind of help me think of some cool names, that'd be dope. But just some of the outside features. I'm gonna do a little tour of the inside. It's not done. It is not done, okay? Some would say it's far from done. Added some windows, this side and on the other side. If you look closely, three solar panels on top. We got our max air fan and then an ac unit on the back shout out to broderick and his dgb they told me that i need ac i took them up on it we got ac it costs a lot of power but uh we have ac so that's good so that's basically it for the outside of the van we do have a few more windows we got one over here by the bed one in here in our dining room that's three feet away from our bedroom but uh yeah i really wish i recorded everything a little bit more but i was just i needed to be 100 percent locked in because i have no idea what i'm doing it's been a big learning curve for me i'll release the tour dates but after we go on tour when we get back for the holidays i'm listing this puppy for sale if we can sell it i'm building another one i'm gonna get some gopros put them up i'm recording the whole thing i promise because i missed out on some of my golden opportunities for example I didn't seal this dude right, so you should have seen the amount of water that was coming in when it was raining. Oh my gosh. But it's good now. And everything else is good. There's no water coming in it. That is great. I was actually really worried about that, but your boy be sealing stuff. But yeah, that's basically it. Now for the inside, I'll share that later, but I got a B tier tournament this Saturday. Today's Friday. I'm playing in Mena, Arkansas, and I'm taking this puppy there. We're gonna ghetto sleep in it for the weekend, and I'm gonna get a practice round in today because I've never played this course. Quick practice round. There's a flex start. I keep telling myself that I don't wanna play flex starts, and then I always end up signing up for them. So practice round, flex start, sleeping in the van, B tier tournament tomorrow. Hole one, 254 feet. Downhill, this is a par 56 out here on a ball golf course. So I'm interested in seeing it. I don't think it's a bunch of open bombers. I think we just have woods and elevations, but we're about to find out. Um, good roll. I forgot, it's behind one of those trees. I just can't remember which one. Fractal A2. Might have to show you guys a new in the bag because I've got a few different things in here. Fractal A2, a little bit higher, a little bit more on hyzer. Does that work over there far enough? We'll see. I thought the basket was behind this big tree. It's the earlier tree. So still same game plan, throwing the A2, just a lot higher, like 20, 30 feet higher. Starting off the day with a circle's edge putt. Committed. Corrected. Nice. This van has been a blessing and a curse. The curse, I have not been playing that many casual disc golf rounds as I want to. The blessing, I have been grinding on the putt. It's literally work on the van for three hours, putt for 30 minutes, three hours, 30 minutes. I'm probably doing about an hour and a half to two hours in putting, maybe 200 putts total. I like to think that it's really helping. I know it's really helping actually. A hole two, look how beautiful this is. Dead straight, 275, basket's off to the left. I can see the tree that it's behind. 275 makes me think envy. Only real danger is this mando left, so just keep it straight. Does I have the juice to get around the tree? No, but it still stayed in the circle. Probably just gonna show just the highlights, you know? Like I said, it's a practice round. Typically, I've been playing practice rounds for score. Not the case. Throwing multiple shots, get a game plan going, and then just figure out which holes are the easiest ones out here. Player two's on the killer right now. Your boy's got a new strat when it comes to practice rounds. The goal is to find the easiest holes out here. An example, you've got, let's say, hole one, 40% chance at birdieing. Hole two, 70% chance at birdieing. I used to practice the harder holes, but what I'm gonna start doing now is practice those easier holes. That way I can bump it up, because if I bump it up 15%, that 70% turns into an 85% chance at birdie. The 40% turns into a 55% chance. I'd rather guarantee those easy birdie holes rather than just practicing the hard ones. I hope that makes sense. Hole three, way off to the right, a lot of trees to deal with. I think forehand is definitely the play. Getting it on some hyzer, hitting that hillside, hopefully skipping up towards the basket. Maybe juice is 318. It skipped up there. Thought I went a little long on the first shot. It went on the more inside route. It ended up being way short. So this is definitely the play. I mean, of course, if I can put just a bit more hyzer on it, stay a little closer, that'd be better for the park job, but I'm in the circle. Committed. Second player. Nathaniel, I respect you for making the uh, switch. Can we start hitting the first one now? This is a prime example of the easy birdie hole that I was talking about. 244 feet, uphill, nothing in the way. This is a must get. This is the one where I need to grind on, put this thing on the pole, get my guaranteed birdie from this hole. That was my envy. Uphill's definitely a factor. Probably plays closer to that 300 mark. Beefing up for the MD1. Yeah, I like that a lot better. 
Got it pinned high. I would hate to hit this early branch on a backhand being a bozo. Forehand's a lot more wide open. Better. This is without a doubt going to be the longest video I've ever posted. So if you guys are enjoying the video, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. It really helps. Thank you very much on the whole five. Giving you guys the benefit of the doubt that you might have forgot to do so. A reminder never hurts anything. It's also crazy the difference it makes when I do remind you guys. Whole five, 300 feet. I thought it was that one in the long. Boy, that would have been sick. Turns out it's 300 feet downhill to the left on a mound. Can't see the basket. Blind shot. Just hitting the gap on some hyzer, then go up to the basket and see what corrections I need to make. That seems a little high. Might have to go a little further, so a little bit lower of a line. Still Still the same angle though. Now we go see how those look. Only info I got out of this is that I got a noodle arm and I probably shouldn't be throwing an A2 because I'm 35 short. I probably could still throw the A2, just uh, not so much hyzer, more flat, get the distance. Absolute death putt, by the way. Nice. Nice. Game plan. Go long, worst case scenario, have a putt up the hill, no death putt. Look at how sexy this shot is. Just a 350 foot straight down the gap shot. It's a pure line. I can see a forehand over here that we'll try later, but you know I love ripping the MD1, so we'll give it a go. Oh my gosh! Imagine. I wasted that shot. Not gonna lie, I've definitely missed you guys playing disc golf, playing with the camera, talking to myself like a schizophrenic. Oh, I miss it so much. You know, once the van is done, I swear, it is going back to daily uploads. I enjoyed that so much, you guys really liked it as well, so as soon as we hit the road, baby, daily uploads. As far as where I'm going, plan was the second week of September I was supposed to be in Miami. That ain't happening. My freshwater and gray water tanker are currently on back order for two more weeks, so there goes that. So first destination, Charleston, then Charlotte, and we're just working our way up north, up the east coast, last, des last destination being Maine. Uh, in October, I'm gonna be in Boston for like a week, so in case there's any of you guys who are some Bostonians and you wanna play disc golf with your boy, let me know, I'm stuck there for a week. Emily's flying out, doing some stuff. I gotta be there at the airport for like a week, but. Anyways, let me know. Straight shot, hole seven, 263. Imagine. Dang, these straight shots are feeling good right now. Where the hell is the ball golf course? I haven't seen a bunker, a freaking green. The grass looks like it'd be your worst nightmare if you're a golfer. And the amount of trees, nah, this is a disc golf course. And a beautiful one on top of that. This place is gorgeous. Open shots, but not too open. You still got some trees to deal with. Hole eight is kind of hiding back over there behind the trees. They love kind of hiding the baskets. 302 feet, told you guys I got a rise in the bag now, 5403. It loves to go straight and have that nice forward pushing hyzer, which is perfect for this hole. Exactly what I wanted to do. Push that tree. Okay, maybe, maybe not exactly. I wanted to push that tree. Needed it to uh, finish before that though. I think you really do gotta bring that tree into play. And boy, am I bringing it into play. What the freak, Nate? That's the tree that I kept hitting. I think if I take that gap, I'll end up in that nasty little bush. So yeah, if I go out wide, I come in the back door, wide open. Arr that's definitely the play. Practice rounds really make a difference. I thought about playing the flex start blind, but I'm smarter than that, all right? Here we have another wide open shot that I really need to get dialed in. It's 354 feet uphill and a little bit of like a head right to left. So more stable DD3. Should just be a stock hyzer. It looks like it's kind of sitting on top of a mound. Swing for me. Skip. Hmm. Aim and ride it, van unleaded. Okay, too much hyzer. Your boy don't have 350 in the tank? Okay, I thought these were actually really short. I mean, tag by definition, I guess they are. It's like 20 feet, but not that bad. Alrighty, baby, back nine snack time. This is where we start to have some more fun. A lot longer of a holes, couple par fours. I'm not gonna give you guys all the good stuff too soon. So a little compilation and we'll jump into the tournament. Got a stiff headwind. Wow. All right, so that's it for the practice round. I hope I don't regret it, but I'm about to play the flex start. It's two, three o'clock right now, so scores are up. I'm not looking though. That's kind of the only mental game when it comes to uh, these flex starts is you see what the score is, so you got it in the back of your mind. I'm just gonna play, enjoy the practice round that has a rating to it, and see how it goes.
Really short. No, 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 no! Let's go. Thank you. Oh, that was a crazy skip off a branch. Yeah. Hmm. Be nice. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh that, like <laughs> that was close. It's in. That still might be short. All right, I'm being a baby. Be a smart baby though, put it close. Oh, Nathan! That should be close enough. Oh, I hate it. I need to practice laying up, dude. I suck <laughs> at it. I suck at it. Oh, geez, dude. You really tried to bring that train to play, didn't you? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yikes. That made me nervous. It made me nervous. <laughs> it is significantly more windy now than it was a couple hours ago. Oh! Oh! <laughs> and then I thought when I hit the tree. I know, I was going to skip in. Oh, Nathan. Oh, it skipped, skipped a mile. Thanks. Is that where it is? Ah, I, where it first hit is where I wanted to be. That skip put me to 30 feet. Oh, swing, dude. Big putt, thank you. Good job, Nate. Let go. It's just silly bogey. Should be a good one. Why am I pulling them right? Why are you pulling them to the right? Oh, just get sneaky. It did. He's lost all confidence with the putter, I guess. Thanks. We'll sh oh, yeah. there you there go. Go. Thanks. Hey, yo! This came out of nowhere! What the freak, dude? Where did this come from? What in the world? Dude, I heard that branch start like crackling. Well, 430 feet, we got a tailwind. Good job, Nate. Thank you. Two things. One, I've never had to throw an upshot like that. Second of all, I am stupid for trying to throw a 450 foot forehand. Me either. So from that point on, it started pouring rain the entire rest of that round. It was miserable. I got completely soaked. It ruined my mic. So I'm over here talking about this entire scene and my mic is now broken. I ended up fixing it. I didn't actually fix it. I just replaced one. Of, I just replaced the mic. But uh, yeah, now we can go on to the van tour. All right, welcome to my van. This is the dining room. <laughs> this way, 
It's pretty freaking small. Uh, front door, winder. <laughs> pretty nice. You guys want to see where we're staying tonight? Walmart. I have a feeling that this Walmart's going to be the new home. All right, so technically this right here behind me is our dining room. We're going to have like a chair here, table. And then of course the seats are swivel seats. So that'll be able to turn around. I'm actually going to build up like a platform right here because when you sit in this seat, your feet kind of like dangle. So if I build up a platform, comfortable for the seating, also extra storage. I can throw some discs down there and everything. Table, this is our dining room. And then next to our dining room, we have our shower. Look at that, your boy taking a shower. Shower head will go here. Fun question, which ways do you guys face when you take a shower? Do you face this way if the water's behind you or do you hit it head on? It used to be this way, now I'm this way. Things grow on me. A little inset to hold our soap and toothbrush and things like that. Okay, across the hall we have the kitchen. Uh, it's not a kitchen yet, but uh, it's in the process. It's actually like 90% done. Had my father-in-law draw up like the blueprints of our cabinets and he helped me build the skeleton and then the drawers and everything was on your boy. And it came out actually pretty good. Uh, we have some push to open drawers, uh, top shelf for our silverware, second ones for like our cups and plates and things like that. Uh, the big old daddy drawer down here with the pull-out fridge. This thing's 60 pounds and boy was that fun to mess with. Emily insisted on having an easy bake oven so we got a gas oven with a three top burner. I think it's gonna look really nice so that'll be all right here. If we come down a little bit, I actually brought the fridge with me. Pretty big fridge, 75 liters. So you can make it all a freezer, you can make it all a fridge, half well insulated, doesn't use a lot of electricity. Um, this right here, is the heart of the van. This is my Blue Eddy. It's essentially an all-in-one everything. This is my battery. This is how I'll be charging all of my 12 volt appliances. I can also plug my solar panels directly into it and that's what'll be charging up this thing. So it's basically like an all-in-one thing. Most fans you had like your lithium battery and then you have to have like a trickle charger and then your DC to DC to get your solar panels to, it's, it's been a mess. I've been learning a lot. This was definitely the way to go. And currently right now I'm charging up my fridge, my phone, my camera batteries and and my max air fan and I'm only using 70 watts right now so that's not a lot total this thing is 2048 and we also bought the expansion pack so we will be good on electricity uh, as far as solar panels I've got three up top they are 200 watts each unfortunately that doesn't mean you get 600 watts the most I've seen this pull in is 450 which is still a lot so that's pretty good. Uh, extra space here in the back of the van. I put a little extra shelf up here up top to store some things. That is our AC unit, by the way. And then up here in the front, I did another little uh, shelf up here to be holding the random things. Up here, we have our ceiling that we put in. It's all stained. Emily's the interior designer, so I'm basically leaving all the stuff up to her. I'm just gonna build it and then she'll decorate it. We make a team. Uh, it's gonna look a little ugly in the back, so give me a second, but there's my bed, okay? It doesn't go there. That's technically the garage. Our bed's gonna go across here. You can kind of already see the racks that we have in up and then I did like a little inset and yeah, so we'll be able to have a short queen, not a queen, but a short queen. I think it takes off like six inches or something like that. It's kind of a lot. That'll be going here sideways. I think the head's gonna be up here. That way we can kind of look out the window. Emily picked out the fabric. So that's what we went with. I think it looks pretty good. And then from there, we're gonna have upper cabinets all across the top here, all across the top over here. And then when you go down the hall, we'll have uppers over here in our dining room. So it's tiny. Um, yeah, we're running out of space. This basically this hallway one way. That's it. So I think it's just whoever starts, the other person has to back up. That simple. And the good thing is, is I'm gonna be spending all of my time outside. I'm basically only gonna come inside when it's dark and edit. So that should be fun. Oh, your boy did all the electricity. There's my dimmer switch. So if it's too bright here for you guys, don't you worry. I'll dim down the lights. So yeah, everything here is gonna be ran off 12 volts. I have my fuse box here with everything connected to it. For now, I still have a few things that I gotta do like, like my water pump and things like that. But uh, everything's mostly plugged up. I've got my USB and USB-C ports kind of sprinkled throughout the van. The hot water heater and the oven are the two things that are only gonna be on gas and that kind of saves a lot of energy. So I should be stocked up on battery. Like give me a week with no sun, your boy should be straight, I hope. So that's the van tour. Uh, I don't, what do we do? What do we do from here? I didn't really think this through. It's eight o'clock. I got a tournament in 13 hours. Huh? Bro, I hate that I choked on the freaking putts, man. Sorry to bring that back up. I did go back out there and play the front nine, I think three times. Got that dialed in, fixed the putt. I was missing right because I kept pulling in left and then I was coming out rather than going straight down 
back at the basket. So putts were feeling a lot better. Still feeling confident. It's one of those things where I can't let the putts bother me because I'd argue and say for the last six months, I've been getting off the tee really well. So I can't beat myself up too much or too much over these putts because I'm gonna have another one. So I gotta stay locked in. Today was just kind of like a crazy day. I mean, the wind and rain, storm, not rain, storm. Came out of nowhere. Yeah, so tee off tomorrow at, what time? 8 a.m., where's my phone? I think at like 9 a.m. The one thing that I'm actually worried about when sleeping in this van is I am a very bad sleeper. Like if I don't feel comfortable, I cannot sleep. I don't sleep in cars, I don't sleep on airplanes, I don't do any of that crap. I sleep in my bed and even that is hard. So in a Walmart parking lot where I constantly hear noises and I'm afraid that people are gonna try to steal me, I don't know how well that's gonna go. So we shall see. Crackleberry Pie Classic. They don't have it uh, pulled up yet. What to do? Oh, dude, honestly, this will be clutch. I've been meaning to do this and today could actually be pretty good. Oh, let's go, dude. All right, so check this out. Played a tournament a week ago or so and I was able to get a disc. I got Paige Pierce Passion. It's always a passion. Is that, that's for the disc, right? It's always a passion. Either way, clean slate, baby. We should go diet. Let's go to Walmart. All right, apparently this is a van life dream right here. Do you guys keep seeing this glare right here? I ran over my phone with the ProMaster the other day. Went to go check the mail, phone fell out of the pocket, didn't know, ran it over. Literally had tire tracks on the back of the phone too. Shattered the back of the phone, front of the phone's fine. Now my phone 100% doesn't charge, one of the speakers broken out of it. And if I use my phone longer than 30 seconds, boy does it get hot. All right, I think that's everything I need. Let's die a disc. Shout out to Barbasol. Shout out to Rit. Support the bottom. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is gonna fit. Shout out to Paige Pierce as well. It fits. All right, I gotta be very careful because if I stain anything, Emily is going to beat my. Is that enough? He's falling. Okay. Oh, oh. What am I gonna mix it with? Fudge, dude, I didn't even think about that. Hold up, a screwdriver. Oh, a little bit of wah wah. Drink up. Bro, my arm is getting tired. Okay, now we gotta make a little mound. Ugh, my hands smell like barbasol. Oh! All right, now for our dye, we went with purple. I literally have a blue dye disc, so I was like, eh. I don't think this is gonna work out well, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on the design, cause uh, I don't think it's gonna look good. Please don't get everywhere. All right, so I think we'll just do a little bit. Oh my gosh, okay. We'll do try to do lines. Kinda doesn't look all that purple to me. Okay, now the fun part. Take the disc. We just plop this hoe right on top, and then I'm gonna give her a little bitty spin. Spin, keep spinning. First dyed disc in the van, we'll see how well that goes. Okay, I'm gonna do some editing. That was fun for 10 minutes. Final challenge, put the cap on, no spill. So check back in on that in the morning. I'm gonna go to bed. Well, I'm actually gonna edit, and then I'm gonna go to bed, so see you tomorrow. It's 8.15. Uh, good morning. Tee off in an hour and 15 minutes. There's our dye. Let's check it out. I literally like woke up 10 minutes ago, so I'm still kind of waking up. Oh no. <sighs> oh no! So it has the potential of looking cool, but I think I didn't get the water to shaving cream ratio right because I think it's all just gonna wipe off. All right, so first round is in the books. Shot nine piece, which is so much better than the flex start. I have got to stop playing flex starts. You guys gotta talk me out of it. But shot a nine piece. Uh, I was very happy with the putting, 75% C1. And then I had a couple C2s, maybe one actually. Uh, 20 mile an hour wins today. So I was very impressed with my putting today. I had a few, I had some good par saves. I had some solid birdie putts. My only complaint is coming down the stretch 18 and one. Pretty easy birdies, hit the basket, hit the band. I could have had two more birdies. I hope that doesn't come back to haunt me, but I'm in second place right now. Uh, I played some clean golf, bogey free. If I can do that the second round, uh, I should be able to make a push for first. Uh, I just got to my drives are feeling great. I'm hitting the fairway, nothing crazy. So just keep uh, trusting this putter and we'll see, we'll check back in after round two. All right, so we're keeping the third place streak alive. Your boy does not have the clutch gene right now. That's also if you're not counting flex starts, I swear I'm done. I'm not playing any more flex starts. I'm tired of shooting good rated tournament rounds and then just crashing it with a flex start. But ended up shooting a six piece, I think. A few errors, I couldn't really get on like a momentum train. 
Uh, I'd hit like a 45 footer and then I'd miss like a crazy straddle 15, 20 footer. I was lacking in the clutch department. Shout out to Brandon Cawthorn though. First time playing with him and the dude lit up the course. Uh, that was a fun little weekend trip. Super extra long vlog. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you guys like next month or something. No, I'm just kidding. Peace.